going on, everybody? Hey everybody, what's going on? How is everybody doing today? Thank you so much for joining me for this live stream, this live lesson. I hope you guys are excited. I hope you guys got your pens and your pencils and your paper and your backpack and your hall pass because we're about to go to school. I'm about to take you on a bit of a musical learning journey, if you will. So I hope you guys are, are ready. I hope you guys are excited. And I'd be hard pressed to find anybody that is professional as I am because I have a whiteboard. Pretty, uh, pretty formal, pretty serious. This is high tech, universal level quality of uh, education. So I hope you uh, paid your tuition fee to say the least. You know what I mean? <laughs> All kidding aside, hope you guys are doing well, man. This is going to be a lot of fun. Um, just going to wait a little bit longer, wait for people to, uh, to hop in and into the stream as always. Um, you know, so if you will, would be so kind, just be a little bit patient. Let everybody get, get situated, get set, um, get squared away. Honestly, it would be really awesome if you guys did take notes and you know kind of went along with what I'm with um, with what I'm going to uh, be teaching, um, because it'll only help out you, but it'll also help out the stream as it gets uploaded, because um, you know people can obviously search this video and or come back to it as a as a point of reference. Um, so anytime you engage with me, um, you know only helps out exponentially. The more people that interact and ask questions pertaining to the topic, the more that this stream will do better and do well. Um, you know, for, for people um, like yourselves after the streams, you know, uploaded, like I said. So, you know, just want to preface that. Thank you so much for tuning in again. I'm going to say hi to the chat now. So you guys are blowing it up. I appreciate you guys so much. Let's see who we got here. Okay, Ian6. What up, Ray? Just subscribed yesterday. Hey, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for being a new subscriber. I really appreciate that. I've had a, this, this past week was a very good week for me. So I appreciate you subscribing. Um, I appreciate... All my subscribers, new and old, you guys are awesome, man. Leo, Linda Gray, what's up, dude? Micah, my dude. Yeah, Micah. We'll talk offline, man. I got to see that thing. Joe Harvey, what's up, my dude? Gabe, how are you? Diego, Justin, Michael Shane, DJ Barry, Zach, Michael Shane again. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys are awesome, man. Congrats on the 20K. Yes, thank you so much for 20K subs, man. That That's huge, man. That, um, that means a lot to me. I appreciate that. I've been working really hard at this channel for a long time now. And, um, you know, I've, uh, I've certainly, I would like to think I've put in the hours, whether or not I deserve it or not. I don't know, but I, <laughs> I've been grinding for a long time, man. So the hit 20K is pretty amazing. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. So I'm going to wait like two more minutes um, and then I'm going to start the stream. All right, guys. So right now, I'm going to give you a quick little layout. I'm sitting on my guitar strap. Let me get rid of that. <laughs> um, so how today's video is going to, or listen to me, I sound like I'm making a video. How stream today's stream is going to work is um, I'm going to be labeling all of the modes and what a mode is and how I learned it and how it's so much easier than anybody, in my opinion, has made it out to be when teaching online. Um, again, just my opinion. I'm not saying I teach it the best way, but I would like to think I kind of teach it in a more... I gotta use my words carefully. I don't ask for it. Like a more common sense way and just an easier way. Um, you know, it's it's the concept is so simplistic and so simple. If you can count to seven, you if you count to seven, you can figure out how to play modes. Um, it's so simple. For the people that have been doing private lessons with me, I've explained all this, and they like it's so fun to see the light bulb go off on their head in their head and like understand how like wow it's way easier than anybody has previously taught it and i'm not saying i'm like some revolutionary teacher i'm certainly not um but i do think i have a pretty good understanding of why people don't like to study theory and modes particularly um and i was one of those people at one point in time but i 
I figured it out. And then once I figured it out, I was just like, oh my God, it's just so much simpler than anybody makes it out to be, all right? So with that being said, I'm in D, drop D right now, but then I'm also gonna be just flipping back and forth between drop D and standard if I need it. Um, I'm not sure if I will, but I also have a drop A seven string just out of frame um, for when, you know, after I explain everything, we'll use everything that I explained and apply it to a more metal tuning, that is drop A. But these concepts apply to any tuning anywhere on the fretboard. Um, you guys know this, at least people who watch my streams, when I say music repeats itself, if you can count to 12, you know all the notes in music. So it doesn't really matter what tuning you're in, as long as you understand that concept, all right? And so, again, throughout, I'll always take breaks because I need to take a break from speaking. And, uh, you know, it'll, uh, it'll help me and help you to, uh, to get caught up and, and squared away, all right? So, I hope you guys are all doing well, and I think it's about time we get started. One last, question, one last little uh, tidbit on what's going on, going on in my life. Today was actually supposed to be my wedding day. I was supposed to get married today. But, um, obviously, here I am with you guys, and uh, my lady and I aren't getting married today. We got to postpone it um, till middle of the summer, so it's kind of a bummer, kind of a buzzkill, but... We're trying to make the best of it. So I'm going to be helping you guys out here. I'm going to be teaching you guys some stuff about theory. And then uh, her and I, we're going to be spending the night together, just kind of laying low, watching a movie, having some good food, just kind of chilling because it's a little bit, a little bit of a downer type of type of uh, vibe tonight. So we're going to change that after, after the stream. All right, guys? So let's get into it. All right. So what is a mode? All right. How important would you say theory is? I'll answer that real quick. Extremely important. It's an extremely important tool. Let's get into modes. So modes, what is a mode? A mode in the most simplistic form and simplistic definition that I could uh, explain it to you and share it with you is basically just a scale or an altered scale, which I'll get to in a second. It's an altered scale that has different characteristics and different tonalities. All right, and that's pretty much all it is. It's just a scale and it's just a different altered scale. And what is that altered scale? Well. It's the major scale. All right. I say this all the time. Everything in music is based off of the major scale. The major scale is the granddaddy scale. And that is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, E, T, and Do. And if you guys have been watching my streams, it's a little bit of a of review. But the major scale is the first mode. All right. The first mode is called Io, Ionian. I had to make sure I was spelling it right. So, Ionian. That's the first mode. And all these modes, these names, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian. Dude, they're just like fancy names that somebody a long time ago decided to call all of the modes. And, you know, sure, roger that. Those, those, are, those are fancy names. But, <laughs> like, <laughs> they're way simpler than, than these names that... that People make them out to be, all right? So the major scale, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, and Do, is Ionian. And to spell a major scale, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. All right, that's a major scale. And I think most of us kind of know that by now that I've been tuned into these streams, okay? So if we know the major scale, let's say I'll play it real quick on one string, just go and open, uh, drop D open from zero to 12. That is do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. That, that was horrible <laughs> singing, but do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, and do. That is the major mode. That is the Ionian mode. That's the first mode. Okay, sweet. So, what is so weird about all these other modes? Like Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to blow your mind. All a mode is is just starting in the middle of a major scale and renaming everything. All right, I'll say that again. A mode is just starting in the middle of some major scale and renumbering the notes of that scale. And that's why I always say it's so important to know the scales and so important to know the fretboard because once you know the fretboard, then you can understand modes. If you don't know the fretboard, you'll never be able to understand this concept uh, well, you might be able to understand the concept of it, but you won't be able to play it. Because if you don't know what the notes are, you won't know where to go. Okay? 
So I'm gonna start labeling some stuff out. We're gonna do everything in C major, super basic, super easy stuff. C major has no sharps or no flats because of the whole steps and half steps formula. Whole step, whole step, whole step, or whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, back to C, okay? So I'm gonna label, make sure you can see this. Okay, so that I, that's gonna stand for Ionian, okay? So Ionian is major, we know that. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Make sure you guys can see that. I'm just gonna alter my camera just slightly. Cool, all right. So Ionian, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That is that whole steps and half steps formula. Spewed off like three or four times, okay? Well now, what about Dorian? Dorian's the second mode. Well, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna go D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. That right there is what's called D Dorian. Now, if you look at D Dorian, it's the exact same notes as C major, but we're calling this one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna number all this. All right, these are all the notes in C major slash C Ionian. Well, all the notes in D Dorian are the exact same notes as C major, but now this is one and this is two. F is three, G is four, A is five, B is six, etc. And ladies and gentlemen, that's 90% of modes right there. Okay, that's 90% of modes. So now I'm gonna go to the next one. Phrygian, it's PH, not with an F. So Phrygian would be E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. That's E Phrygian. Uh, Lydian. We'll go one more. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spell every single one out because I think you'll get the concept. But if I go to F Lydian, that's F Lydian. And all of these, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, have the exact same notes, exact same notes, but they're starting elsewhere in C Ionian, i.e. C major. And that's it. That's literally it. Any questions on that? I'm gonna take a quick second, any questions on that? If you have a question, leave it below, or leave it in the stream. Um, Cause I don't wanna get too far ahead cause I wanna start to explain some stuff here, okay? Thanks for your free lesson, bro. Hey, I appreciate that. Hey, super chats are always welcome. You know, if you ever, I appreciate, you know, you tuning in, but uh, a super chat doesn't hurt if you guys wouldn't mind throwing your boy some change helping me out here along the way. Aeolian mode is harmonic minor. No, it's not. Aeolian mode is just natural minor. We'll get to that. Hey, Ray Chris from Brazil here. You're a great guitar player. Keep at it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks from Turkey, bro. Hey, no problem. All right. If there's no questions, I'll just keep going. So... I'm going to get rid of this Dorian here, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep everything but this Dorian. I'm going to show you something. How modes trip people up and what the difference is. So now I'm just going to write a plain old D major, D Ionian scale. D, E, F sharp. G, A, B, C sharp, D. That's your whole steps and half, half steps formula. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now the difference right here, this is what trips people up. This is D major. That's D major. This is D Dorian. They're different. They're not the same. All right. Remember, D Dorian is really the second mode of 
some major key, some major scale. And that, my friends, is C major. So whenever somebody says, oh, this song's an F Lydian, for example, all you have to do is count back to the major scale. And that's really it. You're really in that key. All right. That's, like I said, the majority of modes. Okay. So now I'm going to show you guys how to connect the dots. All right. Because a lot of this stuff, sure, it's, it's, it's all well and good to know all this stuff, you know, all, the, all, this, all this knowledge. But if you play a modal shape, it has to, I'm sorry guys, this is not enough room for me. If you play a modal shape, it has to fit somewhere. You can't just play it aimlessly, otherwise you're still not really playing theory. All right, like if you're not, if you're not well versed in modes, if you're just like, if you memorize any modal shape, but don't really know how to apply it, what's the difference? You know, you might as well not understand modes or anything like that. So now in music, there's everything, every major key has what's called a relative minor key. Okay. So again, in every major key, there's always a relative minor key, meaning there's another minor key that has the exact same notes. A lot of people think like music theory, like if I'm in major, I'm happy. If I'm in minor, I'm sad and they don't mix. That is the furthest thing from the truth. They all are one big giant granddaddy scale and that is the major scale, okay? And to find out which one is the relative minor, it's always the sixth note of your major scale. Somebody way smarter than us, or <laughs> excuse me, way smarter than me, a long time ago, this is like, all right, so they figured it out that the relative minor is the sixth, sixth note, the sixth mode of some major scale, okay? So I'm going to show you that right now, and then I'm going to turn to chat. I see you guys asking some questions, and I'll get to you, but I wanted to finish out this thought, okay? So the relative minor of C major is this. There's our sixth note, A. So it's A, B, C, D. E, F, G, A. And that is Aeolian. So Aeolian is the sixth mode, and it's just a plain old natural, natural minor scale. And a natural minor scale goes like this. Whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. And if I play it on my guitar, it's sitting on my lap, just playing on the, you know, D power chords on, on one string. It's starting with the open D. It's... Again, that's open 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. <laughs> That's D minor. If I played it in A, it would be, let's say I got to think of my fretboard real quick, uh, E, F, G, A. So it'd be. That's A minor. So what's the big key takeaway here? No pun intended. Well, if somebody says, hey, my song is in C major. If my song's in C major, right? I need you, hey, my song's in C major. Here's my chord progression. I need you to write a solo in three, two, one, go. And we're like a jam band, right? This is like blues and, and you know, rock jam groove type. My song's in C major. Well, a common sense thing to do, let's see, I'm gonna tune back up real quick. If I'm in C major, a common sense thing to do would be play a C major scale as my solo. That's a C major scale, just, you know, riffing on that. But you could also do an A minor scale. A minor. I'm just playing the notes of A minor. This, this pattern that I'm sure a lot of people have seen, the three note per string. That's all I'm doing. I'm just picking out the notes of A minor. But it all fits in C major because I'm playing the exact same notes 
just in a different order and different on a different spot on the fretboard. So if I connected the dots, if I went A minor and C major, so here's A minor, just one octave. And then here's C major. Oops, that's not C major, this is C major. If I connected the dots right there on like some kind of solo, like this. that all fits in C major. So Aeolian is the natural minor mode and or scale. And it, and the bigger picture is it fits in Ionian. All right, I see a lot of questions. I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna answer some of you guys' questions here. Thank you so much for uh, sticking sticking, uh, sticking with me and staying in, in the chat and being engaging. I appreciate it. Okay, I only know like two places to play. Could you maybe grab a guitar and give us a practical example? That's what I'm doing, man. I'm sure that was a little bit of an older, um, older chat but um yeah i'm, I'm going to continue just be grabbing the, the guitar and showing you guys some stuff um i only know two places to play well i just showed you two places to play um but i'm going to continue to show you where all the rest of the spots are to play okay and just how if you guys just stick with me and be patient i'm trying to jam an entire semester's worth of theory into like you know an hour and a half two hour stream to teach you guys and I'm, what i'm going to be doing is after i'm done talking in, in standard i'm going to grab a seven string and uh you know Riff out and metal, if you will, okay? Uh, excuse me, Ray, how to understand the roots of the... Excuse me, Ray, how to understand the root chords that fit on a scale? Don't worry, we're getting to that. We're getting to chords. I got my notes down here. I'm going to show you how chords are all, like, um, uh, applied and, you know, whichever, whatever you want to call it. Like, applicable, if that's even a word. I'm going to make a note over here just so I don't forget. And if I do forget, which I don't think I will, but if I do, um, remind me, just bug me, all right? Hey, Nanobot, thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. I, thank you so much. You're the man. Modes are all relative. Exactly. M modes are relative to the major scale, to the major root, the big daddy uh, mode, which is Ionian. Yes. Learning stuff like this with my teacher right now, so it's cool to get another, re another review. Hey, awesome. That's, that's, that's cool. I'm glad to, uh, to help out. B is not a whole... B is whole, not half from... And C... B is whole, not half, and C is half, not whole. I'm really not sure what you're saying there. Um, there's a half step between B and C, if that was what you're saying, not a whole step. I'm, I'm really, I, I don't, it, um, hit me up, hit me another chat, try to clarify it, please. I'm sorry, I don't, really don't understand, um, and I want to make sure you understand. Cheers for that, man. Hey, Absolutely. Hey, Ray, will you upload the stream or your channel so I can refer to it back in the future? Thanks for the great content. Yes, I will. This uh, Streams take a little bit longer to um, to be up on the channel lately. It takes like a day to, to upload, but they will be. They'll be up here, um, so don't worry. Um, I'm going to keep going, but I, I guess I want to make sure I knock out all the questions. Maddie Jams, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you so much. You were so kind. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And it pumps me up and wants me to keep keep doing this, man. Thank you so much. That's always been my problem with riffs. They start out good, but I can't figure out where to go and what rest of the fretboard. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Okay, absolutely. That's where we're going right now. We're going to be talking about chords and how to apply it all to the rest of the fretboard. All right. I think we're going to do the rest of the fretboard first, and then we're going to talk about chords and how it applies to metal. Because chords and metal are kind of hypocritical in a way. I'll, I'll show you. Stick with me. I'm getting excited. I'm, I'm, I'm not as like, uh, it takes me a second to get, to get the, the flow going of, of me and my streams. I kind of start out slow, but then I get like excited. I'm getting excited, so uh, just stick with me, all right? <laughs> okay, so I hope I left myself enough space. So now we're going to go back to the old Dorian, okay? D is Dorian, and we're going to do... Uh, everything is in relationship to C major, okay? So D, Dorian. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Okay? Hey, thank you so much... D's, D'd C. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You pump me up. You guys pump me up, man. You guys make me so excited to continue to want to do this. Thank you so much. Ah, it means so much to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It means the world to me. All, all of your, all your donations go right back into the channel. Thank you so much. Patrick Graff, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I lost my train of thought. You guys are so good to me. Okay, here we go. I'm getting excited. <laughs> okay, so D Dorian. I'm gonna show you how to play a D Dorian. Mm -hmm. 
And there's tablatures all over online and stuff. And I don't want to spend too much time on the shapes because that's anybody can learn a shape. But basically, it's 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 14, 10, 12, 14, 10, 12, 14. Wait, I gotta. 11, 12, 14, 11, 12, 14. I had to, I had to play it to, to get it down. But again, that is just D E F G A B C. There's my there's my root. You know, my 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 granddaddy right there. That's my C. There it is right there. And then it just starts all over. So D E F G A B C D E F G A B C or uh, uh wait. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I messed up. The uh, Dorian is 12 13 15, not 11 12 14. So it's there we go, that's much better. Sorry about that, my apologies. It was a half step down. So again, D E F G A B C D E F G A B C D E F G. All of those notes right there are all in relationship to C major, to C Ionian. So that's another spot. We have A I A Aeolian. C major. Uh, D Dorian. And now let's keep labeling the rest of the fretboard. Kevin. Kevin, thank you so much, dude. I miss you, man. Guys, Kevin's my unofficial guitar tech. Anytime that I need sol soldering done, I go to him. Um, oh, wait, what am I doing? Kevin, you're messing me up, man. <laughs> um, guys, Kevin is a phenomenal quote-unquote tech. And uh, he makes me erase my notes because I get nervous when he does nice things for me. Kevin, thank you so much, dude. I miss you, man. I miss you so much, dude. As soon as this whole thing's over, we're gonna jam, all right? I miss you, dude. I miss you. All right, let's go to E Phrygian now, okay? So, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. If you guys are noticing the pattern here, again, I'm just starting somewhere in the middle of the um the major scale the c major scale the c ionian the granddaddy now i'm just playing in the middle i'm just starting somewhere else on the fretboard but i'm still playing the same notes and that's all modes right there so now i'm gonna do e phrygian so that's 12 13 15 12 14 15 12 14 15 again 12 14 16 13 15 17 13, 15, 17. The whole scale. And that is E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. And honestly, guys, yes, I had the fretboard memorized, but I, I'm not thinking about the notes right there. I'm really not. I'm not thinking like, I know this is def definitely an E and definitely an F. I'm just, I'm just, um, memorizing the scale shapes and then trusting music theory a lot of guitar players they don't trust theory of how simplistic it is i found that out when i'm teaching teaching a lot of people privately like it's so easy people are like are scared to like distrust it and trust their, their fingers and their gut but like this is literally e f g a b c d e f g a b c d e f g a and i literally didn't think about the literal like spots i just trusted this shape because i've been playing the shape for years and years but I never understood what was going on until I took theory classes. So, that's another spot on the fretboard, okay? We're almost out of spots. I mean, we started on the fifth fret. Now that we're all the way up to, I believe, the 17th or 15th fret. I forget where E Phrygian ended there. I, I gotta play it again. Hold on. Okay, yeah, so we're on the 17th fret. So, so far, we're going from the fifth to the 17th fret, coast to coast almost. We almost got the whole fretboard labeled. Let's go to another one. Let's go F. So F Lydian. F G A B C D E F. F Lydian's my least favorite one to play because it's kind of the hardest. There's like not a lot of patterns there. Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. Took me a second, so. That's F Lydian. Again, 
all the same notes. F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Wait, E. There it is, okay. It's very hard. So one, three, five, two, three, five, two, three, five, two, four, five, three, five, six, three, five, seven. Very wonky scale. But again, that's F Lydian, and that's all those shapes right there. You see why I don't like F Lydian or Lydian in general? It's a very like unorthodox scale. Not a lot of patterns there. Let's go to G Mixolydian. That's my favorite one. And this is actually like the dominant mode, which I'll tell you guys what that means in a second. So when a dominant, the, anything, when anybody says dominant in music, it's the flattened seventh sound. And like a dominant chord, like a dominant seventh, it's just the flattened seventh in relationship to a major scale. So we'll go G Mixolydian. So a regular one octave major scale is right there, but we're flattening the seventh. See that? So let's finish the scale. I'm sorry. There it is. Takes me, it takes me a second. I gotta play it faster. It's like, it's like one of those like muscle memory things. That's Mixolydian. And guess what? The next one, the last one to do is F sharp Locrian or the diminished one. But don't even worry about that diminished word. Oh, I'm sorry. Oops, <laughs> I'm getting all messed up. So I was thinking of G major. All right, uh, I don't know what I was thinking there. So after G mixolydian goes back to A Aeolian. Sorry about that. I made no sense. I was thinking of the F sharp in G major. I got a little confused there for a second. So A Aeolian. We've already covered that one. That's just plain old A minor. That's A minor. And then if we want to do the B, B lock green is the last one. So I got a super chat. Misfit Kid, is it best to learn scales before anything else? I'm gonna answer that, I'm gonna think on it real quick. I just wanna show you B Locrian. Start on the B, which is the seventh fret of the E string. Locrian's the easiest one, in my opinion. It's just the same, it's three instances of three different scales. And that's seven, eight, 10, seven, eight, 10, seven, nine, 10, seven, nine, 10, eight, 10, 12, eight, 10, 12. B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. That's all C major. So what I just did there, don't worry, Miss Vicky, I haven't forgotten your, your, your question. Just want to get this out. So what I did right there was I labeled every single spot possible to play in C major. Every single modal shape has a spot on the fretboard. And all of those notes are everywhere on the fretboard. So when somebody says, hey, my song's in C major, play me a riff, a little lick right here. Five, six, seven, eight. That's C major. That you're gonna you're gonna run out of, run out of ideas really quick. Well, guess what? Now you have from the first fret to at least the 17th fret that we labeled. You could even go higher. Excuse me, if you want. But the idea is I like you go from the first fret to the 17th fret. And if you just remember those shapes in relationship 
to C major, you will never run out of ideas. You can do something as simple as like, like a boring little kind of octave scale, if you will, or you can be like a complete shredder, like, I don't know, like, Like, I'm, I'm not the most shreddy guy in the world, but you can literally just rip on all of those modal shapes. And it doesn't matter if you're super simple or super complex. It's all in key and it's all following the modes. So to answer the Misfit question, Misfit Kids question, I would say do both of the, I dropped my pick, do both at the exact same time. Because I did, I did the, um, shapes first, the scales on the fretboard first. And I didn't know what the heck I was doing until I went to school and somebody told me, hey, this is how it applies. So to bridge that gap, I would do both. I really would do both. Learn scales and learn theory at the same time. It's only gonna help out, man, in my opinion. I mean, you could learn theory and then go to the guitar, but if you do both at the same time, I see no reason why, why it won't help you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't see how it, how it could hurt you. So I would recommend do both. I did scales first, and I really wouldn't recommend it if that helps out, if that answers your question, okay? If that ha answers your question. So, I'm gonna pick up my pick again. <laughs> and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start to talk about the spellings of these modes and how they trip people up. All right, and we're just gonna do an easy one. We're just gonna go do, to do Dorian because it's right next to C major. We're gonna do D Dorian again, all right? So I didn't necessarily, ooh, I got blue, I want black. I didn't necessarily have to erase all that, but I wanna just start fresh. So D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. That's D Dorian. And what that is, is one, two, flat third, four, five, flat six, flat seven. Oh, I'm sorry, flat, normal six, flat seven. Yeah. Yeah, so a Dorian is flat third, flat seven. So D Dorian. Let me make sure you guys can see this. That's one octave of D Dorian. And so what this spelling is, again, it's all in relationship to a major scale. Well, when somebody says D Dorian is flat third, flat seven, they're talking about it in relationship to D major. Okay? Does that make sense? So when, every, when something's spelled out, it's altering D's major scale, because D major is this. Ten, twelve, fourteen. Ten, twelve, fourteen, eleven, twelve. I'm just gonna put it down just a tad. That's D major. Well, D Dorian. There's my flat third right there. Let's keep going. There's my flat seventh, and there's my root. So whenever you see like a spelling of a mode is a flat this or a sharp that, it's all in relationship to what that original letter name's major scale is. All right, so don't get, don't get confused with that. And again, anytime you have a mode, it's in relationship to a major scale, okay? Any questions? I see a lot of, I see a lot of, actually I see a lot of questions. Um, I'm going to take a break here and I want to answer some of you guys' questions because I see you guys blowing up the chat, which is absolutely sick, dude. Thank you so much for, for interacting. It makes this a lot more fun, honestly. Um, let's see. Make sure I get the fretboard or um, the whiteboard in frame. Okay. Oh, man, I guess I guess scroll up here. Love that you're teaching us. Hey, thanks, Berg. I appreciate that. Happy to help. He's showing us Moe's work like, okay, you guys are talking amongst each self. Good, good. 
Um, I can play songs and definitely not a beginner by any means, but I'm just kind of stuck where to go from here. I got you. I do love the key of C major. It just sounds so lovely. I'm working on a song in that key now. It's the happiest key by, by any means. And, you know, generally speaking, in my opinion. Is it best to learn scales before anything else? I say no. Okay, cool. What's the difference between melodic minor and harmonic minor? We'll get to that. That's a little different. Harmonic minor and melodic minor is just a different difference of notes. Melodic minor is um, kind of like half major, half minor, and harmonic minor is uh, just a raised seventh in relationship to the minor scale. I'll get to that. I'm going to make a note of that. That has, That's not really modes, though. It's just a different... It's just a different minor scale modic melodic versus harmonic i'll get to that if i if i forget please remind me i'll get to that it's pretty it's just really simple okay so now in music rock metal pop there's chords there's chord progressions there's places that you know we start here we go here we go here and then we go back to the root you know what i mean that happens in most contemporary music and you know that's what we know as, as musicians and fans of music, right? So a chord progression in a major scale goes like this. And I'll explain what I'm doing here in a second. Oops, forgot the seven or the six. Okay, so the capitals or the uppercase, whatever you want to call it, those are the major chords. The minors are lowercase. And the seventh is diminished. Okay? So, I don't want to spend too much time on diminished chords because diminished chords aren't really used in, in contemporary forms of music, like rock and pop. It's kind of it's kind of like classical and even like, you know, some shreddy stuff. That's a little more in depth. But just I want you guys to know that stuff. But for this, one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are like the main chords used in music. One, four, five is always major. Two, three, six is always minor. Okay? So, in relationship to C Ionian slash C major, the chords are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and C major again, just the octave higher. Okay? And, you know, I'm sure most of us know, like, a, like the cage system or... You know, like, at least know, like, the six-string bar chords. Like, here's C major, here's F major, here's, e, here's G major, and here's C major. Like, how many times have you heard something similar to that? Like... Maybe not, maybe not with as much gain, but you've heard a, a chord progression like that. Well, every chord has a coinciding mode. So C major, C major chord has the C major mode. Oops. And then F, you know, F major has F Lydian. Wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's modes that are coinciding with the chords. And so, although that's important for regular music, you know, regular music, not metal music, I'd say it's not important for metal at all. Because... Metal generally does not play full-on fleshed-out major and or minor chords. Now, you can, and I'm not saying if you do, you're wrong. But I'm just saying, generally speaking, when we're playing the metals, you know, it's... You know, if you have that face, you're automatically 10, 10 heavier. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm just trying to prove a point. But the idea is metal is not like sitting here and be like, okay, like I got a C major here, I got a I got an F major here, I got a G major here, I got an A minor here. You know what I mean? Like it that's not metal. That's 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 not. So a good way to, in my opinion, negate that problem, remove it, omit it from the equation and trying to understand modes and, and music theory is just don't play anything other than power chords. Now you can play like different intervals within power chords. Like, I don't know, you can play like an add nine power chord or you can like play a sus four power chord, but those aren't really major or and or minor because major and minor chords have a, a major third or a flat third at least. That third is what makes a chord major or minor. 
okay? And, you know, a perfect example, D major is D F sharp A. That's a D major chord. But in, re but in relationship to C major, it's D minor because of that F. There's no F sharp in C major. It's just a plain old F. So we have to flatten it. That's why it's D minor, because all the notes still have to fit within the key. You can't play a D major in C major because of that F sharp. That F sharp will clash with the F that is typically, well not typically, that is known in C major. So all of this right here, I'm just thinking out loud and trying to, you know, convey what I'm trying to think in my brain to you guys is because everything's so complex in music theory, you know, it really is. So rather than like focusing so much on like, oh, is it a major or a minor? Just know the landmarks. Know the landmarks of the key that you want to play in. And that's why I'm always like, you know, okay, if I want to play an E major, I'll go. And I just know it's open two, three, five, seven, eight, ten, twelve. Oops. <laughs> or if I want to go E major, it's open two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, twelve. Oops. And so that's what I'm trying to convey to you guys is know your landmarks and don't necessarily worry about if it's major or minor. Like I'm not sitting here. Well, what I just did right here is that's E minor all day. Like that is E minor. That's like enter salmon. It's just, it's just E minor, dude. But they're not like playing like they're not playing full on fleshed out bar chords or minor chords or major chords. They're just playing power chords but they fit in E minor. So why why make it more complex for yourself? Does that make sense? I hope it does. So if you know the landmarks, you can play in a key. And more often than not, 99% of the time, whatever tuning, whatever tuning you're in, I can't be demonetized because I didn't play it right. I'm onto you record labels, I'm here. I'm here. Record labels literally watch my videos and, and uh, pick out stuff to, uh, try to de demonetize me with, but I'm on to you. I'm playing stuff wrong on purpose. I'm playing it close, but it's not the melody. I'll fight you. Anyway, whatever tuning you're in, whatever tuning you're in, that's more often than not what key you're gonna be in. So if I'm in, if I'm in E standard, I'm either gonna be in, in, in the context of metal, I'm either gonna be in E major or E minor, cause metal, lives off of that open chug. That's what 90% of all metal was riffed off, you know, riffed off of is. See what I did there? Playing it wrong, I'm on to you. But you see what I'm saying? Like, everything is deriv a derivative off of off of that, off of being in whatever tuning you're in. Same with drop D. It's all whatever tuning you're in is probably what key you're gonna be in. So rather than focus so much on like majors and minors, just know your key and then know your fretboard mark markers. D minor. D major. That's all it is, man. And then just know the modal shapes that coincide with that key and you're doing modes. Any questions on what I've covered so far? Because once I take a break from this, I'm gonna grab the seven string. Very simple concept. And I'll show you guys why I like seven strings so much, especially when it comes to like music theory and stuff like that. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just switch up gears a little bit. I was confused on modes. This is very helpful. Dude, thank you so much, man. Thanks for the, the positive reinforcement. I'm glad. I'm glad you're finding this helpful. That's that's what I'm here for, man. It's it's so much simpler than, than people make it out to be, man. I, I know I no offense to anybody who teaches modes online or wherever. But I've seen a lot of people that are like, oh, it means like of the wind and like it's a really breathy mode. Or, this is a haunting mode. It's like, yeah, I mean, okay, sure, but in the grand scheme of things, like you're literally just playing 
a part of a major scale and you're emphasizing a, a part of the major scale. Like just a, th a thought that came to my mind. If I play, if I'm playing in, uh, let's see, G Mixolydian, I don't know. If I go like, wait, I'm gonna drop D, hold on. Okay, if I'm playing in G Mixolydian, I'd have to go G, A, uh, and B to, you know, as a part of my, my chord progression. I'm gonna save that thought for a second. I got I got something I wanna speak on on that real quick. I'm gonna get to the chat. Andrew, you inspired me to think of something. Master, master, mister, <laughs> mister. <laughs> Fuck yeah, that's so sick, dude. Angel, hey, no problem, anytime. Mister, <laughs> mister, I love that, dude. That's so good. Oh my God, that's so funny. Okay, so I don't wanna lose this thought. So I wanna show you what makes something a mode and what makes something like a major scale or something like that. So I'm gonna leave this here, that's C major. I'm gonna draw G mixolydian, which is the five. G, A, B, C, that's a dodgy B. D, E, F, G. Okay, cool. That's G mixolydian. And I'm gonna show you G major now, plain old G major. G, A, B, C, D, E. F sharp and G. So I think it's pretty easy to see the difference. It's that F sharp. Okay. So if I'm writing a riff right now, like if I'm if I'm riffing and I'm emphasizing G right now. I'm just going back between G and A. That's Jane says by Jane's addiction. <laughs> That's what that chord progression is. But anyway, getting a little off track. If I went to... If I went from G to F and back to G, my song is like, this. it's all about G right here. See what I'm saying? Like my song's in G right here. keep coming back to G. So it's the listeners like, hey, that's the familiar spot. That's where this song is. But if I went like this, if I went from G to plain old F, that has to be G mixolydian. But if I went if I went from G to F sharp, then it's G major. And that one note, that one note, that F to F sharp difference is the only thing separating G mixolydian from G major. So if my song's in G mixolydian, if I'm going like this, and it's my turn to solo, raise up the bat, here we go. Ready, five, six, seven, eight. Chord progression's going along. And I hit this note. I hit that F sharp. Hear that dissonance? Now it sounds kind of cool and like, you know, I'm, you know, a metal sense, like, ooh, it's spooky, hey, ooh, this is evil. But in a traditional theory sense, that F sharp is going to clash every single time and it's going to be quote unquote wrong in a traditional sense as it pertains to modes and theory and scales, etc. So to fix that, if my song's in G mixolydian, if my turn to solo, I'll just throw in a regular old F. Super sick and technical song right there, you know. I can't wait to record that. But uh, <laughs> all kidding aside, it's just that one note. That's what differ differentiates G mixolydian to G major. So if my song's really in G mixolydian, it's really in C major because this is the five of C major. 
So if my song's going, I can solo in C major. can also solo an A minor. Etc. And all I'm doing is I'm just labeling and mapping out notes of C major. That's literally all modes are. So some pretentious <laughs> I don't want to say the word, but if somebody that's very pretentious is like, oh, okay, this is my song is in G Mixolydian and it goes like this. It makes me roll my eyes, dude, because all it really is, is it's one, it's confusing everybody. If people don't really have a full on understanding of this crap, they'll get really confused. But also too, it's like, you sound like a tryhard. Yeah, sure. It's really in G Mixolydian, but it's really in C major. It really is in C major. It's just like, we're, oh, okay. Like I'm, in my opinion, a, a more um, human approach, for lack of a better word, would be like, okay, here's my song. It outlines the chords of C major. It outlines the four and the five chord, and it goes like this. To me, that's so much easier to like process. It's like, all right, it's in C major, just emphasizing going five, four. It's an awkward chord progression in traditional theory sense and music sense, but I get it. I understand it. And to me, that's like so much more easy to digest. You know what I mean? Any questions? Any questions at all? Because now I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to grab the seven string. It's going to be a little bit, a little bit more of the same, a little bit of, um, not redundancy, but just review, I guess would be a better word. Um, but yeah, I'm going to grab the seven string and, um, just show you more about modes, um, and teach it in drop A. Okay. Because drop A is a much more metal tuning compared to C major. Okay, I appreciate you guys all sticking around with me this long. We've been going for about an hour now on modes and that's pretty sweet that you guys are that into it because that means you guys are dedicated and you guys want to get better. And it makes me inspired to continue to want to teach you guys. Oh. I love this thing so much, but honestly, dudes, it's giving me some trouble. The jack is not fitting right. It's like got an easy, I think, I don't know if I said this last week, but the jack just comes right out. So I think I need a new jack for it. Uh, I think it's just my own doing from having my leg kind of sit on it. But anyway, you know, first world problems. I'm gonna make sure this thing's in tune real quick. It was in tune, but I just wanna double check so I'm not teaching out of tune. Plus it gives me a chance to, to take a break. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you, everybody who's given a super chat, who's been asking questions, who's been, you know, just motivating me to continue to do this, man. You guys are so sick. I appreciate you guys so much. I was actually in B standard because of my, my new band that you guys don't know about yet. I'll be releasing something here on March 15th. And uh, I was writing with this thing and, and pl practicing and playing. But uh, that's for another day. It's for another stream. Okay, is this a this is a dumb question? But how do you how do you use modes in in a solo or when writing songs? Exactly. Somebody answered it. Uh, depends on what key you're in. So basically, everything that I just labeled out is what we're gonna continue to talk about. But yeah, you use modes because it's like a drag and drop formula type of thing. All right, and that's actually kind of a nice segue. Major key, minor key. Yeah, major or minor. Key. Yeah, I would just say major. Whatever major key you're in, you're also in that minor key. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about that. So now I'm in drop a, okay. And like I said, about 20, 30 minutes ago, give or take whatever, whatever tuning you're in 99% of the time in metal, you know, this channel is metal based. That's going to be your tuning. That's going to be your key. Your tuning is going to be your key. I misspoke there. That's why we tune in this in drop tuning because this is automatically a power chord. And that's automatically something we can use if 
you know, we're like, not, I don't know if struggling is the word, but if we want to be heavy, and if we have volume up, <laughs> then, you know, that's easy to grab. We're familiar with that. Oh, hey, thank you so much, Al. I appreciate that. Dude, thank you so much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love the, I love the, uh, the visual there. Thank you so much, man. You're pumping me up, dude. Thank you so much. Super Chats, you guys are so sick. Thank you so much. So Moses is like pentatonics, but on steroids. No. No. Pentatonics are a little different. Kind of, but no. Not really. No, not really. <laughs> not really at all, actually. No, I'm not. No. I'll say no. No. Pentatonics are just outlining parts of the minor scale. Like, here's the minor scale. Oops. <laughs> Forgot I had a mammoth of a guitar in my hand. Pentatonics are just picking out parts of a minor scale. A little different. And that's that's for another stream. Another 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 night we'll we'll, we'll tackle that. You guys love these streams and it, it makes me so happy. So uh, I'll be sure to knock that out, you know, in, in another stream for sure. Um, and I also have melodic versus harmonic. I'll be sure to answer that. I'll answer that right now. All right, harmonic versus melodic. Melodic is just the last half of the major scale. So a, I'm going to do everything in A minor right here. So it's... So that's melodic. And the difference between the major scale and melodic minor is just that one note, it's that flat third. And harmonic minor is just the raised seventh of the minor. You hear that? Versus, this is natural minor. This is harmonic minor. Hear that? Na, na, or na, na, na. It's this, the seventh raise that turns into the like major seventh as opposed to the flattened seventh or minor seventh. And then melodic is just, it's just that one note. Cause here's major and here's melodic minor. It's just one note. So this is why I get lost in how the modes are implemented and how to choose which mode to use. Okay, let's start to tackle that, okay? Start to dissect that. So how to know what to use and how to apply it? Well, again, you have to know the fretboard. You have to know the fretboard. If you do not know the fretboard, this will not help you. This is like, this will not help at all, man. I swear to you, if you don't know the fretboard, you will not know, you will have a very difficult time. I'll say that, it's not impossible, nothing's impossible. You'll have a very difficult time knowing what the heck you're doing if you don't know where the notes are it's just the, it's just like it's like learning how to drive a car but like not knowing like how to like read street signs or something like that it's like you know how to do it but you don't know how to like go somewhere type of deal you know what i mean yeah you know, it's like you have to you just have to know the notes and then figure it out from there okay so again let's start to talk about a a a now we're in drop a this is drop a this is metal this applies to any drop tuning, but drop A is pretty metal, pretty common. Um, middle of the road in terms of like metal, if you will. And guys, I have all this stuff memorized after just spending years and years with it and just memorizing scales. A lot of people, I would like to think they don't put the time and effort in. And they think they think modes are, and scales are so hard, but then I'll be like, "How much time did you really spend memorizing all of your major and minor scales?" So I'll be like, "Ah, maybe ten minutes." Well, it's like do more, do it until you have it memorized, and then you won't have to like think it's hard. You know what I mean? It's like with anything. It's like, can you play Master of Puppets? Like I don't know, like yeah, but like at two o five BPM. Well, practice to get to two twelve. It's like that. Same thing with scales and stuff like that. You know, I, I think I think. Metal players, generally speaking, struggle with the diligence of the bookwork uh, because it's not like necessarily needed for the genre of the music that we're trying to play. But you know, that's 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 up for a whole another debate type of deal. So now we're in A land, A major, A B C sharp D E F sharp G sharp A sharp or A not A sharp, and that is open two four five seven nine eleven twelve. Hear that?
Now we're just using the exact same frets as I was using in E standard, but now we're all the way down in drop A, but we're just playing a major scale by following our whole steps and our half steps. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Two frets is a whole step, one fret is a half step. Open, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. A major. Now, let's start to label out the modes of A land. Well, it's the same thing we were doing in C major. <coughs> I had to think there for a second. Okay. I'll do one more and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you guys. Kind of ran out of room there, but again, this is the same thing we were doing in E standard, where you just drag and drop everything and you figure out, you know, what notes you want you want to use and what notes you want to implement into your song. I drop my pick again. So like if I wanted to write a song right here, right? If I wanted to write a song by chord progression, let's I don't know, let's just label let's go one a one four five chord progression in this Phrygian. We'll go I'll use a different color here. We'll go one four five. Alright, that's my chord progression. C sharp, F sharp, G sharp. All right, so first we have to find C sharp. Here's open A, B, C sharp, okay? C sharp, third fret, sick. Now we gotta go find F sharp. D, E, F sharp. Wait, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So my, my chord progression, I'm so sorry, it goes, Three, nine, eleven. C sharp, F sharp, G sharp. That's my chord progression. This is my sick, awesome song. That's my song. That's my whole chord progression. Well, that is in C sharp Phrygian. That is also the granddaddy A major. So, in this chord progression right here, Bobby, I'm talking to you, dude. I could play an A major scale under that. Why? Because it's A, B, C sharp. D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. And all of those notes fit in C sharp Phrygian. So. Etc. I could also play a B Dorian scale under there. Again, playing B Dorian, all the same notes of C sharp Phrygian. But the big takeaway, and the thing that really matters, and what people really, in my opinion, all really care about, it's an A major, which is in plain old A major. Does that make sense? Any questions? Any questions at all? Well, look room would be the fourth mode up. In, in relationship to what? Hey, Bob, what's up, dude? 
Got to go. Thanks, Ray, for the amazing lesson. Hey, Mike, uh, uh, Micah, thank you so much for, um, for stopping in. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Ray, love the vids. When would you use minor scales modes and not use the pentatonic scale for improvising? I'd use both. I don't, um, I don't, I don't, uh, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, dis, dis, discriminate, I guess is the word. I had a brain fart there. Sorry about that. Let's see, uh, I would, ascending G sharp instead of A, it sounds like low green instead of A major. Okay, you guys are talking about yourself, that's totally cool. Alright, so, again, if I'm in this land right here, if I'm in A land, it's the same thing I was doing in E standard. You just have to, like, drag and drop, you have to understand where you're going, and then for, from there, just, like, <laughs> implement all the different stuff, all the different modes and patterns. And then you're just playing, then you're playing modes and you're playing music. It's so simple. Everything is just a major, an altered major scale. Like I have some notes down here. Mixolydian is a flattened seventh. That's what, that's how you spell mixolydian. It's all in relationship to the major scale. So if we're in A land now, mixolydian, all of a sudden you just flatten that seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, here's seven. There's my seventh right there just one different note but all of a sudden it's a different mode and it trips people up another one uh let's see uh locrian it's a flat third a flat sixth and a flat seventh so a locrian so one octave let's stay with one octave so flat third uh, locrian is flat second Flat third, flat sixth, flat seventh. It's just all like my brain's starting to fry, as you can see. I've been spewing off a lot of stuff, but as as you can see, it's just all it is is just a, a, an altered major scale, or you're playing in some major scale in some major key, and you're just emphasizing the notes of a major scale, and that's pretty much it, man. So. The big takeaway is you could be as complex or as simplistic as you want with this stuff. Does it help me? Yes, 1,000%. I use it when I'm writing my own original stuff for this new band that you guys don't know about yet. And Luna Muerta, if I need a solo, I'll, fi I'll figure out what my chord progression is, and then I'll just pick out notes. Now, do I always and only use mode shapes and, like, theory? Sometimes no. Sometimes I just go by feel because that's kind of what I grew up doing. But now I use that as a tool to like save time and like kind of understand what's going on and try to figure out what I'm trying to use it and what kind of mood I'm trying to convey type deal. And that's pretty much it, man. Like there's no, there's no secret to it really. There's no like weird, mysterious thing of modes and being like, oh my God, modes are so like advanced. If you know modes, you're an absolute wizard and a genius. It's not really the case. Sure, it helps. It helps a lot. But... I'm just an everyday dude that just knows theory, but it doesn't make me like all of a sudden be able to like rip on the guitar. It helps, but it's just, it's so much simpler than people make it out to be. So are there any questions about anything I covered? Again, I just want to make it known. Thank you so much for all your super chats, all your support. I love you guys so much. We're like a couple shy of 10K on Instagram. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Thank you for that. I don't know if we hit it, since the stream has started but like um, it might happen during this weekend and that is insane to me 10k is a lot of people that follow me on instagram so thank you for that i appreciate that and uh you're just thank you for your support i love you guys so much you know you guys are awesome so are there any questions about this stuff because we've been going for just shy of an hour and a half and i want to make sure you guys get something out of this and as always these streams will be up on my channel once it, it's done um, processing whatever you want to call it like done buffering i forget the, the terminology but if there's any questions please let ask and let me know is there a difference between modes of a major and my is there a difference 
between modes of a of a major and minor scale and harmonic minor scale. Is there a difference between modes of a major scale and minor scale and harmonic minor scale? So yes, yes. Um, there's three there's three different things going on there. So the difference between a natural minor and harmonic minor is that raised seventh. So again, if we do it in A here. So if you want to play in harmonic minor, you got to take your natural minor seventh. Oh, that's okay. I'm not. No, don't 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 apologize. I I understand you. I understand you. Please don't apologize. It's okay. I'm I'm doing my very best to, to teach. So I appreciate your question. Please don't apologize. It's all good. You know I, I got you. Um, so the the mode, if you will, there's not a different mode per se. It's just a um a uh, you got to change one note. So like if I'm playing an A Aeolian, aka a natural minor. Now all of a sudden, like, okay, that song's cool, but I want to raise it. I want to do um, harmonic minor. Just raise that seventh. So anytime you hit this note, which is a G sharp, instead of a natural G, right? Yeah, so a G sharp. If I'm playing an A harmonic minor, G sharp always has to be the note I hit, okay? So there's another G sharp there, because this is A. Um, there's a G sharp, a G sharp. Now, the G sharps all over the place, but that clashing note would then become the clashing note between those two would be the G and or G sharp. So to play in harmonic minor, you got to play a G sharp instead of a G. That's pretty much all it in relationship to a natural minor. Hope that makes sense. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody? Anybody got any questions about modes? I mean, I, I, like I said, I've been spewing for a long time. I want to make sure you guys get something out of this. But you guys pick my brain. Again, thank you so much for all the super chats and all the support. I love you guys so much. It's been a killer week for me personally and our channel, man. We've been killing it. And I love you guys for that. You guys have been knocking it out of the park. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a great ride this week. And I hope next week is just as good, if not better. So thank you so much again, guys. But if there's no questions, man, I, you know, I'll uh, I'll wrap up the stream here and you know we'll we'll, we'll get on our on our way and let you guys enjoy your Saturday night and or Sunday morning. Um, good stuff, right? Hey, thank you so much, Josh. I appreciate it. Okay, okay, here we go. So, is oh, just one or two notes difference? So, is the different modes just one or two notes difference? In relationship to what, Bobby? Because modes are, every mode is different. Like, every spelling is different. Like, a Dorian spelling is one, two, flat, third, four, five, six, flat, seven. But that fits in the major scale like the, the whatever the dorian is there's a bigger picture and that is the major scale have i heard the new lamb of god song is there a new one out like other than memento mori because if there is i haven't heard it is it possible to be co to combine modes and move in between them yes and that's what i did in standard tuning so like if I'm in if I'm in C major, I can go C Ionian and D Dorian, bounce back and forth. So here's C major. Here's D Dorian. And those notes intertwine with one another. Oops, sorry. <laughs> So I'm combining the modes there because I'm labeling the entire fretboard. But what you can't do is you can't play, in a traditional sense, you can't play C major, C Ionian, and D Ionian because there's clashing notes there. You can you could just, just listen to it. They just don't sound right. They sound like you're playing in two different lands. And that's because you can't combine modal names, but you can combine modes of a bigger picture that is the major scale um in relation to the major scales okay bobby i got you so is the different modes just one or two notes difference in relationship to the major scale 
I gotta answer this. I gotta use my words carefully. So, every mode in a major scale is the same notes. The notes in C major versus D Dorian are exactly the same. Okay? So I would answer that question with no. There is no difference in terms of notes between the modes. They're the exact same. Again, I'll label for you real quick. Ionian and Dorian. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. They're the exact same set of notes. Letter names. Ex exact same yeah, notes and letter names. So there is no difference between the notes, but the spelling, I think I know what your question is. Let me, let me, let me, let me get work this out. But in relationship to the major scale, like here's D major. Here's D major. And here's D Dorian. So there's a little bit of a difference there. I mean, the F sharp's different. And the C sharp's different. So your question of one or two is yes, that is correct. But this this is now a whole nother world, a different key than C major. This is now D major, and there's a whole new set of modes for that. But they all, will all have those notes. Does that make sense? Hope so. Uh, okay, got a lot more questions here. So are modes basically variations of three note per string scales in a sense? Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be three notes per scale per se. I mean, like, you can play, um, like, a ma an A major scale like this. But I like three note per strings because it's just, one, it looks cooler, and you can go faster. As long as you play it right. <laughs> Not like that. You know... That is a lot faster and practical, especially metal, as opposed to going. It's just not as fast. So you can play. You can play. I mean, you can play a major scale like this. You know, that's that's technically a major scale. Or if I'm in, you know, use the high E. That's major as well. But yes, the literal. Um, scales are altered ever so slightly but you got to remember if you play like if i play an a major scale i'm an a major but if i play an a dorian scale i'm really in g major see there's always a bigger picture it always reverts back to the major scale all right thank you guys so much for your questions you guys are awesome this is fun dude this is so fun <laughs> i came on a little late but i'm sure it was a great stream take care of yourself and continue to make great content for state metal brother hey bob Thank you so much for tuning in, brother. Yeah, hey, this will be up here for you to check out after the stream is done. I'm just wrapping up here, just knocking out any questions. Well, maybe I'm not wrapping up if you guys have a ton more questions and are struggling. Um, I'm, I'm here until you guys get it, so don't worry. Uh, let's see. I can com can I combine where does Phrygian... Can, I, can someone combine where does Phrygian dominance and Arabic modes come into play? Sorry again for all the questions. Don't apologize at all, dude. That's what I'm here for. Can someone combine Phrygian dominance and Arabic modes come into play? Sorry again for all the questions. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I meant when does Phrygian dominance and Arabic modes, etc. come into play? I mistyped earlier. So I'll be completely. I don't want to. I don't want to steer you wrong. I'm not sure what Arabic modes are. I really don't. And I'm. I'm so sorry. I don't know that. Um, I think. I mean, Phrygians are kind of Middle Eastern sounding. Um, but I'm really sorry. I'm not really sure what your question is. I'm really. I'm really sorry. Um, may, I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, you, if you want to hit me up on Instagram and maybe we can talk offline, just shoot me a DM there. I can get you squared away. But I just don't. I don't want to tell you something on wrong or something that you're not looking for. So um, I'm really sorry. We'll, 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 I'll get you squared away. Hold on. I might need it one on one. This is what I'm lost on. What you lost on, Bobby? I got you, man. Just keep asking, man. We'll get it. Hello, is it easier three notes per string also when alternate picking? Yes, exactly. It's just it's just a more practical in terms of metal. 
your cool laugh to kick down theory knowledge. Good shiz, Ray. Hey, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate you, brother. I'm trying to help out. Trying to help out um, the metal community and bring some theory into it because nobody talks about it really, or talks about it in a in a like kind of a simplistic sense. People, in my opinion, more often than not, t talk about theory much more advanced. Like they just start at like advanced and they don't start at bare bones basic. So I'm trying to do that, and I'm hoping I'm conveying it best way I can. James, what's up, dude? Back from dinner. I'll rewatch this later. Hey, thanks so much, man. Glad to see you back. We're just kicking it, man. We're just answering questions about modes, dude. Treshawn Edwards. Hey, how what's up? Show the blue scale. It's important for metal. Are you telling me what to do right now? Are you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, the blues scale. It's just got the uh, the tritone in there, the blue note, if you will, right? Yeah, in relationship. Here we go, Ray. So, so the the blues scale is just the tri is um the pentatonic scale, the first position. Wait, I'm getting a little carried away. A pe a pe a minor pentatonic. Then we throw the blue note in there, the blues note, if you will. It's just the tritone in relationship to A. So it's. Cool. Let's see, let's take a look at. Let's see what else you guys are saying here. Thank you so much for all the questions, man. You guys are killing it. You guys are awesome, dude. Thank you so much. So I think what you guys are asking about the Phrygian dominant versus Phrygian is Phrygian dominant has a major third instead of a minor third. So Phrygian dominant is like this. In, in, in A. So here's A Phrygian. Phrygian dominant is this. Ooh. As long as Ray can play it right. Hear that? Robert Baker's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody spam a number one for Robert Baker because he is, in fact, an amazing guitar player. Everybody spam a one in the chat right now. Here we go. GG Robert Baker. How you doing, sir? So good to see you, man. Hi there. About to fall asleep right now. Getting late here in Europe. We'll watch replay tomorrow. Keep up the good work and thanks for all you do. Rock on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Luca, major scale is E string. Okay. Chromatic blue note. Okay. Yeah, look at all those one. Robert Baker. <laughs> What's up, dude? Celebrity in the house. By the way, what's making your tone? Sounds awesome. Thank you so much. Right now, I'm just running the uh, STL Tones Will Putney Suite as we, as we speak. I haven't used it in a while, so I figured I'd, I'd throw it on here for you guys and just jam on it real quick. I, ha I did have an orange rock verb last week. I always cheat when and view Phrygian as a harmonic minor. Not sure why my brain works that way. I always cheat and view Phrygian as a harmonic minor. So... So, A Phrygian, A harmonic minor. They sound, yeah, okay, there's like, there's a little variance in there. Okay, that's pretty cool. Phrygian dominant me. Okay, okay, okay. I was gonna say, okay, Phrygian dominant. There you go. Oops. Wait, <laughs> I'm getting all confused. Robert, I've been doing this for like an hour and a half. All the scales are blended in. Phrygian dominant. Right? And then Phrygian. Oh man, my brain's getting fried. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yep, E Phrygian dominant equals A harmonic. Okay, okay. That one's making sense. All right, yeah. I'm, dude, I, I, I see you just jumped on here, but I've had this whole board like mapped out with all like all the modes of like several keys and like, you know, I'm like starting to like get fried for sure, man. But thanks so much for tuning in, dude. I appreciate it. I'm just answering, asking any, and answering any questions. 
on everything that I've covered with modes and just trying to explain like how a mode is just basically some altered major scale scale or in the big picture it's like a part of a major scale like Phrygian is the third of a major scale you know like uh, C sharp is a major type of deal so that's just kind of what I have broke down for the last you know close to an hour and a half man so it was fun it still is fun we're still we're still knocking out all the questions uh, I gotta go late here, 11.30, South Africa. Cheers, bro. Sorry for the horrible English. Hey, no worries, man. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Never understood what dominant means. So, Al, dominant and like a traditional music, there's a couple different um, definitions, but dominant, without thinking of, about much, it's just like it has a certain pull, has a certain um, like oomph to it, a certain weight to it. Um, and like when you think of like dominant seventh chords, a dominant seventh chord or a dominant something is a flattened seventh. Um, you know, like if you do like a, a dominant seven, a D seven or an A seven, it's just a flattened seventh in relationship to the major scale. Um, so like a perfect example, if I play like an A major seven on a D and V seven string, you know, if, as you as you would, I'll play. C, okay, we'll play C. It's a lot easier. To make this a dominant, I would just lift up this third right here. Or I'm sorry, the seventh. I'm so sorry, the seventh. Because here's my root. Here's my seventh. Hear that? And there's the octave. So to flatten that, just raise it up and then um, bar it right here. So here has a different sound. Probably not the best example. Like I said, on a seven string with distorted guitar. But you know, with like Phrygian dominant or like Lydian dominant, where there's just like, it's an altered scale. And the word dominant means it has a certain pull to it. It, it. Like it's a bit of a stronger stance. That's the best way I could describe it in layman's terms. But just think like dominant, dominant doesn't really have like a, um, like a, uh, a, a, like a hard definition. It's kind of just like a term to describe something. Um, that's the best way I could describe it in layman's terms. I hope that helped. Hope you guys enjoy your meal, Michael. Hey, somebody going to get some, somebody's eating the wings. Man, making me jealous. Okay, Al, cool. Thanks, man. How's your guitar doing, by the way? Al sent a guitar in last year for the, uh, for the channel for me to check out. I appreciate you. What setup would you recommend for somebody who's a guitar recording noob? Ah, that's for another stream. I got a lot of, I got a lot of videos coming up and that just might be something that I might be covering for you and for everybody that's tuned in. So... Don't worry, I got you. Just can't give away all my, all my tips and tricks right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it solely with modes. If you want to do it on an Ask Ray, I'll be sure to hit you up there. But just trying to keep this streamlined for modes. I don't want to get, you know, going down the rabbit hole. I appreciate your question, but I got you, man. All in due time. No, it's not like that. It's not like that, man. It's not like I'm like, oh man, don't, don't, you know, you're not worthy. It's not like that at all. It's like. Last just last week, I was doing some theory classes, our stream, and like it turned into like way off topic. So I'm just trying to stay focused. So don't worry, I'll be sure to I'll be sure to answer that very soon. Trust me. Um, let's see. Great man, I wish you would have played around with it a bit longer. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want you to miss your guitar too much, man. What mode do you gravitate towards the most? So honestly. Honestly, dude, I, I gravitate towards major because it's just like how my um, how my brain works. Because like, like I was saying, like everything is a derivative of a major mode. So like for me, I like my brain is like, all right, I have to figure out what what the granddaddy scale is, what the Ionian mode is, what the major mode is. And then from there, then then I like I'll I'll, um, you know, use a different mode in relationship to the major but for me i always have to figure out what it is in major if that makes any sense and so you know like if i want to if i want to solo like let's say my song is in a minor i would automatically start in c major like if i'm improvising if i'm jamming i would always start in the major mode just because it's like it's how my brain works it's like that's like my groundwork now i wouldn't always like just automatically start there but i would have to figure out what am i really playing in and that is with improvisation and writing and whatever. I just, I just, you do that too. All right, cool. That's, that's cool. That you do it too. And I think, 
I think for me it would be so hard to be like, all right, I'm only going to write in Phrygian. Like, I'm, I'm the Phrygian guy. Because I would be like, well, what am I really in? You know what I mean? Like, you have to, in my opinion, you have to figure out where you, what, what you're really in to figure out where else you can go, in my opinion. So, I'm glad we think in the same way. I'm glad I'm not, like, a complete weirdo. Or maybe me and you are the weirdos of the group. Who knows? Where's my Glary? My Glary guitar is in the other room. I still have that thing. It's metal, by the way. Writing a song about Hong Kong. Been playing for more than two years. I wanted to do a melodic solo with some shred in it. Hell yeah, man. 10 out of 10, we're the weirdos. Hell yeah, brother. That's fine with me. If I could be a weird... If, if Robert Baker and myself are in the same sentence, by all means, that's totally fine with me. Am I getting the new Jim Root jazz message? Yes, I am. It's on its way. So I tell you what, everybody. That's all I think I got. I think we're I think we're all moded out, if that's even correct English. Um, so, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you. Did I say English? I can't even talk right now. <laughs> I can't even speak. But seriously, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys so much. Can you say something about when you play certain modes? Can you play? Can you say something about when you play certain modes? I'm not sure what you mean, man. Can you say something about when you play certain modes? What mode should I use for that solo dough? I'm not sure what you guys mean. Like Phrygian or Ionian. Can you say something about when you play certain modes? So I always play Ionian first. I always play Ionian. Yes, I'm from Philly. When do you pick what mode to use? I always pick I always pick Ionian and then like so Ionian just tells you where all the notes you can play and then you just find them on the fretboard type of deal. That's how I describe it. Oh my god, you guys are killing it with the questions, man. Oh my god, you guys. I was about to get out of here. Excuse me, Ray, what do you what do you think about overlapped scales? Well, all the scales overlap. All the notes overlap. C major and D Dorian. Well, here's C major. Here's D Dorian. They're overlapping right here. They're all overlapping right there. So those notes overlap and the scales overlap. And the same thing goes with all the other modal shapes all over the fretboard. Do you use a specific mode to get a specific feeling in the solo? I don't think like that. I don't think like that because if I played like an A Phrygian, that's really F major. So like, this is really F major. I don't think like that. To me, it's just like, that's F major. Um, so like, I just pick out individual notes and do like little licks. Like I don't ever write a solo like, okay, it has to be only in Phrygian. I, I don't write like that. I only pick major. I'm in drop A, standard six to six, E to E, and then the low A. So many thanks from Spain. Stay safe. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Cheers from the United States. Stay healthy, stay safe, take care of your friends and your family and yourself. I love Gino sandwiches. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I'm an A tune. Yeah. All right, guys. Hey, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for your support, man. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of streams here in the future. This was probably my best stream. All your super chats, all your support means everything. I appreciate you guys so much. This is a lot of fun, man. This is a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. And I'm going to get out of here, all right? Take care. Enjoy yourself. I'll see you guys on Monday with a new video. I love you guys so much. Take care. Later, y'all.